Trade What You See with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, Larry Pesavento. Okay, looking good, Billy Ray, feeling good, Lewis. Uh, what we're looking at now is the S&P 500 over the past, uh, well, let's see, uh, 10 days or so. And a little red box up there. You'll see the structure of that we're looking at with these ABCD patterns here. You see the final D point comes in at the 61% retracement there at uh, 4068 uh, I believe the high today, I don't know, was, uh, my beeper just went off uh, when we went above 40.60. Uh, and if we close sharply higher than 40.60, we'll probably go up to the 78% level. But everything that we're looking at says that this should be a very, very important day. In fact, I said earlier on my show uh, that I thought it was as important as the March 5th high of uh, 2009. And the reasoning for that, I'll bring this chart up again because we I just see my just heard my alert go off the second time. I get this up here so you can take a look at it. And we did make that. We rallied 300 points in a matter of about a few seconds was everybody was able to get on the train. And you'll see we went right up to there and we hit that number, which was uh, right at uh, uh, 13, whatever that number is. The last thing it was, is it even number 13,000 and change, I believe is what it is. Let me double check it here. I can hardly see it. Uh, yeah, 13,000, uh, 13,000 and not, uh, just right at 13,000. That's what we were watching at as we were looking at some of these things. This probably uh, will be considered even probably the greatest. Uh, I'll, I'll get it up here so you'll see it again here. Here's the S&P uh, NASDAQ again because that's the one that's been running the whole thing. So we'll take a look at that and you'll see that's what we're watching here. Stan Harley's going to be our guest here at the break. Uh, he's going to talk to us about left translation and right translation, which is from uh, Walt Bressert. Um, gosh, we've been around so long studying this stuff. The reason why I'm here in Tucson was because of Walt. Uh, and I used to come over and visit him. And then Stan came here to live for a while. Miner was here for a while. Mark Douglas was here for a while. So there's a whole little group of people here. Uh, some of them have passed away. Some of them have moved on. But uh, anyway, that's the reason why I came here is I would come and visit Walt all the time. And when I had to find a place to live, I said, well, I think I'm coming to Tucson. And by that, just as I got to Tucson, uh, Walt moved to uh, uh, the Sonora area of Mexico. And uh, he lived there for quite a while. Then he lived the last few years with his uh, sister and his wife over there in Las Vegas, Nevada. And he passed away of Alzheimer's. I think 10 years or so ago, but boy, he was a stand-up guy. And that left translation and right translation is just super important, folks. It, it just really is. you got to be able to really understand that because this is what we think is happening right now. But anyway, let's move on to another one that we've been waiting for, and that was the gold market yesterday. I wanted to bring this up to you uh, just to give you an idea of where we are here. You'll see here. Yesterday, we were hitting the 382 retracement as we were on the air. Uh, the actual number was uh, at 1937, uh, but it missed it substantially. It went to 1936.10. And uh, so it missed it by $90, and it's rallied a little bit, around 40 bucks since that time, but that doesn't mean very much. Anyway, let's just, uh, hasn't even rallied that much, actually. So we're going to see if that means anything or not, but my beepers are going off again, so bear with me here one second, folks. I want to see where we are uh, with these things, and I have to tell you, it's the dollar index just made the 61% retracement, folks, right on the money, and let me, I've got to turn this off, so this is going to be really interesting what's happening now, because the money, oh, we hit that 4065 in the old S&P, shut the front door, oh, I missed it. It was 4066. Shut the front door and raise the rent. Well, missed that trade. We'll have to go on to the next one. All right, let's move on to. Uh, I, I'm sorry, folks. Everything is beeping at once, so just bear with me here. I have to. I'm going to. I'm going to post a chart. It's the dollar index, and I just want you to see it because this is what we wanted to see happen, and that's what we see happening. And this is the reasoning. If you want to follow the money, 
you're going to see it just a second here. This is why the beeper is telling you that there's something going on in the world. And that not only that, my hog thing is going off. I haven't, that hog thing must have been on there for two years ago. Here, just a second. I got to turn this off. Now, bear with me here one second. A lot of things happening. That's all. A lot of things happening. All right, let me change this window here. There's where we are. Here's where we want to go now. Okay, now you just busted through there. That's when the euro took off, and that's when stocks took off, okay? Now, we did hit that number uh, in the S&P, which was the 61% retracement up there at uh, 4065. That means it'll be 4085 very, very shortly. So we'll be watching some of these others as we uh, move here and see what's uh, going on. All right, let's just uh, do a couple other quick things here. I wanted to show you what happened here with this dollar yen here for just a second here um, folks I have stuff that I'm doing so just bear with me here I wanted to give you a picture of what that dollar yen was right this was happening before the Fed came out for somebody probably knew things like this were happening but uh, that was the dollar yen moving that's a pretty substantial move here and let me move on to the other one and get uh, if you if you if you did that gold trade folks put your stop at break even and come back in a month because either going to make some, well, put a ten dollar, you know, lock in a thousand bucks or something. Anyway, that's that's what I would be watching. Anyway, I'm just giving you some of the patterns of what we're watching here. What I tried to do here, let me go over this. I think it's important because I spent uh, a good long time preparing this video that never got out, and that's because I'm having trouble with Google and all my other stuff today. But let's take a look at this one. This is a very important chart, and we'll get it up here. No Elliott wave or anything like that. This is old back in the envelope math. There's your high back in February. The market came down six weeks. It's made multiple ABCD patterns. The final big one right here, you can see the 135 pattern right there. Boom, bada bing. And there's where we are right now. We hit that uh, 4065. If you got filled at 465, you put your stop uh, at 4068. That way you're only going to risk a $3, uh, 150 bucks. If it works, it'll work really good. If not, don't worry about it. The one to sell was the Dow Jones because it was the weaker of the two. Russell was the even even the really weaker. I can't even take out the high. I mean, hello, operator. So, but that's still early. We don't know. This is a big thing. I don't know what the Fed can't what the Fed said. I won't know about that for a long period of time. You know what? It doesn't even bother me at all, folks, because I go with these little patterns try to tell me, and that's all we're looking at. If you remember yesterday. When we were on the air, and this thing broke, uh, you know, well over 60 handles. This was the E-mini from yesterday, okay? And then if you look at this, you'll see where we are uh, right there. Now, let me explain to you why I think this is such an important time. I showed you the E-mini S&P, and I showed you the NASDAQ. Now, what I want to do is I'm going to show you the Russell. Okay, now here's the Russell, and you'll see it looks like a totally different chart. Uh-oh. Shut the front door and raise the rent. I did something wrong here. Okay, and here's the Russell. As we get the Russell up, you'll see we rented the 382. Now, we're going to take a break here. and we get back, I'll be chatting with you again. So live every day in an attitude of gratitude and may God bless for the next three and a half minutes. <laughs> Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously when you sign up for the tiger forex report you also gain instant access to teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted forex strategies and fundamentals what is behind the tiger forex report for all the details and to start your 30-day tiger forex report subscription today visit the front page of tfnn.com tfnn educating investors 
TFNN has just launched their new trading room, the Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with the Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In the Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other tigers and tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Now, toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Internationally at 727 873 7618. Okay, we're back, folks, and I posted the chart of the uh, Treasury bonds going over the last. Uh, Oh, last 14 days, you'll see that the low we made today was a 382 retracement of that low. Uh, so if you bought that, you want to put your stop at break even. We've had about a two point rally off of the bottom, and uh, it's either going to stop right here or it's getting ready to move, uh, move a, a lot higher. Whether it does or not, I don't know. Okay, now um, I did want to. We covered the gold and we covered the bonds and we covered now we're having a really nice move in the euro. And I posted the chart of the dollar index in there. You can see that it smashed through that 61% retracement by quite a bit. And then that shot the euro up to the above the 108 level, which was uh, sort of uh, ex expected. We were, we were thinking something like that might occur. Now, whether these things are interrelated to what's going on in the world or not, I'm not sure. All I know is the significance of what we're looking at here uh, cannot be underestimated because if we close above that, and if you're in the S&P trade, and we did that on the other show, of course, uh, it went to 4066. But if it gets above, if you see 4067, you don't want it because it did exactly what it did. It dropped 25 handles really quick. And if it's right, it should meander down uh, towards uh, the end of the day would be my would be my guess here. So that's what we're paying attention to uh, here this morning. I showed you the Russell. I showed you the NASDAQ. I showed you the S&P and uh, the Russell uh, and the Dow Jones. And the Dow Jones was interesting because you hit that number again, folks, uh, that one I posted just a little while ago. We went above it by, oh my gosh, I think, I think less than 10 points or something like that. It was very, very short. And it sold off from that level from what I understand because my beepers haven't uh, rang any th since that time. But that's where we are. And if we close really strong today, folks, and I mean – you know, you get the Dow up uh, three, four hundred points and the S&P up above 40, uh, 65, then this is probably 100 percent wrong. And same thing in the gold. The gold cannot go back below that low we made yesterday at 37. You know, it's had a pretty good rally. We went from 37 to, to 80, I think, as a $33 rally in just a, you know, very, very short period of time. So 
Those are just some of the things that we're watching here today. There's a lot of weakness in the commodity markets, folks. We've got big drops in corn, wheat, and soybeans. That's non-inflationary. And, you know, we had a uh, nice little 382 rally uh, in the crude oil today that uh, I believe held. Let's just double check it and see if, in fact, it did. Just give me one second. And, yeah, it's held okay. And the others are hanging in there pretty good. Where's the S&P is trading? Hold on. Where are you there? It's trading at 44. How low did we get? We got down. See, didn't do very much at all. Well, let me see here. Give this. Give me one second. I got to get this up here so we can see what's looking at. Yeah, we came right down and made a 61% retracement on the day, folks. That was the lowest. So it, watch this. Uh, keep an eye on this number right here, folks, since it was such a perfect one. Uh, watch uh, 40, 30, 40, 34, folks. If we start going below 40, 34, then you're looking at something that could be uh, – pretty substantial to the downside. But right now, all we did was make a 61% retracement from the range we had early this morning at 40.22. And so that 40, I'm going to put the limit minder in just in case it gets there for kicks and giggles. But by, like I said, if you see a 40.66 print, uh, not good, not good. So just uh, keep that in mind. That's very, very important. Let's, uh, let's do something here that we probably should do, and that's update this gold chart just to show you the importance. Oh, dear. Oh, my goodness. This is really important. Hold on. Time out. Stop the music. Shut the front door and raise the rent. Let's get this up here and take a quick look at it. And then I'm going to post it here because this is why you guys pay us. So let's move on here and hold on a second. I've got to, I've got to shift it over just a tiny bit, boys and girls, so that you'll get a good copy of it. And that copy will be coming post haste. And here is the post. And here is the haste. Here's our gold. If you don't like Fibonacci numbers, I think that's only fair. Some people like them. Some people love them. And some people don't even know what they are. There's your 382 retracement right here, right on the money within a dollar. Now, you get above that. Remember, this was the 382 on the long term when, when we broke out from, remember? At 1618? No, no, no. 1810? And then we went all the way up here to 2020, two harmonic candles down to right here to 382. There's where you are now. You start getting above here, you're looking at 2100 in the old yellow metal. Now, whether that means anything or not, we're going to know pretty shortly. I uh, hope you folks get a chance. I don't know how many people are going to be listening in to the second show, uh, you know, here at TFNN because uh, uh, we do have the ability to – Get our good friend, um, Mr. Stan Harley, is going to come on and do the same show again. Oh, boy, I don't like it when I see all these little things that pop up and I don't know how to get rid of them. Hold on just a second here. Um, this is just a really important day here. Okay. Okay. Um, oh, well, and what do I want to cover here? i got two more minutes. So if you have any questions, it's 877-927-6648. Very, uh, very wild day in the market so far, but not too wild. I mean, we're still up on the day on some of the indices. Uh, some of the others are not, but uh, we'll see. They're all up now, aren't they? Uh, no. Well, we still got the S&Ps up. The NASDAQ is still up. And the Dow Jones is unchanged. And the Russell, which has been the weakest, is still, uh, you know, down on the day. So those are just a few. We've got uh, silver's up 46 cents. Gold's up $20. So we've had a pretty good run in some of these things. But the, the key levels to watch here now is at 40 uh, in the S&P. Watch 40, 30. Well, 40, well, 40, 30. If we get below 40, if we get down on the day, be careful. That's all I can say. I don't know anything more than that. And we'll go from there. I wanted to uh, take you folks across the pond. The, those of you that didn't hear the other show, this was the uh, FTSE. That's been going on. Of course, we had the rally up to the 61% today in the FTSE. But I wanted to show you this uh, from Tommy Terrific, Tom Hugard. See the harmony that's there right at the exact 61% retracement. And look at this beautiful A, B, C, D pattern forming. There's your A, there's your B, there's your C, there's your D. And that's pretty much it. So that's uh, what we're looking at right here. And then we'll move on to one other that I wanted to show you. And that was the one we talked about before. It's just in living color. 
and it has to go higher because there was another swing in between here, but I want to get this in here. Basically, what I'm doing is killing time till we get Stan Arley on the line. So move on to the next one, and there you'll see what we did is we came down here, and then we took out this high, and that led us to that one that we were looking at with the uh, E-mini uh, S&P here, and we'll end the show here with this from uh, – just draw it up one more time. And there's where we are. Okay, and that's where we're like I say, we get above here. If we close above here, folks, if we close above that 40, uh, 65, uh, we don't want to mess with it. But uh, if you sold it at 40, 65 after dropping uh, 25, 15 handles, you, your risk is nothing. You put your stop at break even. It sees 40, 66 again. Get out of 40, 65. That's basically it. We'll take a break here. We're going to have Stan Harley next, folks. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my Gold Report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, we're back, folks. And I believe we have Stan Harley on the line today. Stan, are you there? I am indeed. Listen, uh, we <laughs> I had so many sounds of the accolades from your first show i would like to tell the folks that stan harley who's probably the premier cycle guy that i know uh mm -hmm. is going to talk to us about uh right translation and left translation right translation is bullish left translation is bearish i'm going to lead them leave the microphone over to you stan and please go through those lovely charts that you shared with us uh, previously so most of the people stayed around for the thing, so that's really great. So fire away, my friend. Sure, I would be. Uh, d d well, we're delighted to have you, that's for sure. Uh, 
Uh oh, I don't like that. Broadsword to Danny Boy. Broadsword to Danny Boy. Oh dear. Oh no, 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 no. Uh, uh, hello. I can't talk. Can anybody hear me? I can't hear Stan. I hear nothing. I don't know what's going on. Can you uh, hear me, Larry? Oh, you're coming through now, my friend. Okay. You're coming through Sorry. now. We, okay. we had some issue there. I don't know what it was. But uh, uh, technical are you able to see my screen now? We are. We're looking good, Billy Ray. Feeling good, Lewis. So please okay. continue. Uh, Start from the beginning, just to be just to be safe, okay? Because I, I don't want the folks to uh, to miss any of this. It's that important to them. If you'd like cycles and how the market structure works, please uh, start from the uh, beginning. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think it's critical if we're going to understand how the markets are moving, we have to understand cycles. And there's more to understanding cycles than just understanding the uh, the timing sequence i.e. low to low or low to high or high to high. Uh, but we need to understand this concept called translation, left translation and right translation. And I found that in a rising market, there is a tendency for the crest or the high point of the cycle to occur to the left of the midpoint. So in the graphic, you can see this idealized sawtooth pattern that uh, – reflects the trough to trough sequences. And then right at the middle with the dotted lines, we can see where the crest occurs. And in a rising market environment, which we have over on the left side of the graphic, the crest or the high point tends to occur to the right of the center of the cycle. That's called right translation. And that is indicative of a rising market condition. Uh, however, comma, when uh, the market transitions from a rising market to a declining market, what tends to happen in a number of the benchmark indices in the stock market, we start to see that translation moving leftward, i.e. it goes from right translation to perhaps center, and then it goes to left. And then once you have definitive left translation in the trading cycle pattern, uh, you know that lower prices are, uh, are in the offing. And so what I've done here is let's take a look at the stock market. Let's look at several charts. And, uh, and I look at what I call the big five major indices. A lot of folks, I think, um, to their error, look exclusively at the S&P 500 and kind of end the conversation there. But I think technicians, you and I and everyone else watching the broadcast here, need to look at more than just the S&P. I look at what I call the big five major indices, uh, the Dow Industrials, the uh, S&P 500, the NASDAQ Composite, uh, the New York Composite, and the Dow Transports. And among those five, I want to see confirmation of an uptrend or confirmation of a downtrend or divergences at pivotal turns, pivotal highs or pivotal lows. And last but not least, I want to take a look at uh, the translation functions within each of those benchmark indices and keep track of them. Here's a chart. First chart here is the S&P 500 going back about a year. And what I've noted here uh, at the bottom are the numbers one, two, three, four, which enumerate what I call the trading cycle pattern within the context of the primary weekly cycle. And the primary weekly cycle I have found spans about eight months on average, 34 weeks, about 169 trading days. That's, that's a nominal uh, time count. Now, sometimes it's more, sometimes it's less. But if one looks at four or five iterations of this cycle, uh, one will see that 
boy, the average falls at right at 34.0 weeks, uh, 8.0 months. Those two numbers are Fibonacci. Surprise, surprise. Um, now, that 34-week cycle is typically spliced into four. I call these trading cycles. If the cycle contracts down to maybe, sometimes it contracts as low as 20, 21 weeks, uh, then there might be only three trading cycles. If it expands uh, out to say 50 weeks, which it can do, there might be five trading cycles. So it's, it's always different, but just nominally speaking, stick with me here. The nominal primary weekly cycle is 34 weeks and it typically has eight trading cycles. And they're usually not the same length. They, they vary plus or minus. Uh, and that's exactly what is going on here. The first trading cycle, by the way, from the October bottom of last year, spanned on the S&P chart 49 trading days. The second one was 53 trading days, and we haven't got, we're in the early part of the third right now, and of course have not gotten to the fourth yet. But the crest of the prior cycle uh, occurred to the right of the midpoint. That is indicative of right translation, and we had a higher crest, and we had a higher trough. Second trading cycle, which terminated back on the 13th of March, that was 53 trading days measured trough to trough, trough to trough, and the crest occurred just one trading day to the right of the midpoint. Um, so check the box for right translation, but just barely. <laughs> uh, now let's look at some of the other indices. Uh, let's look, look at the Dow Industrials. Similar pattern, trading counts a little bit different because the highs and lows don't come in exactly the same day, uh, but that's what we're looking for. We're looking for either confirmation or non-confirmation. Um, first trading cycle, 49 trading days. The high point on December the 13th, was certainly to the right of the midpoint. Check one box for right translation. Uh, second trading cycle, ah, shift is definitely developing here. 55 trading days, bottom to bottom, and the high that we saw in, uh, uh, in I believe it was late December, I can't remember the exact date, it escapes me for the moment, but it was clearly, as you can see on the chart, left of the center line, that's left translation, uh-oh, uh-oh. Warning, Will Robinson, danger lies ahead kind of thing. Um, let's look at the New York Composite. Similar structure, trading count from bottom to bottom and the highs a little bit different. Right translation in the first trading cycle. Second trading cycle, the high point occurred precisely at the midpoint of uh, 58 trading days. That's 29, which is oh. Lucas number. Listen, we've got to pay we're going to take bills. a break here. We'll pick it up after yes, the break. Yes, we'll be right back with Stan Harley, the Harley Stock Market Letter, folks. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. 
first-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. DFNN.com. Educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Okay, we're back, folks. We're speaking with Stan Harley of the Harley Stock Market Letter. Do you want to continue, my friend? Um, the uh, the Dow Industrials is exhibiting a little bit different pattern than the S&P. We've got left translation. The New York Composite is exhibiting what I call center translation, i.e. the crest of the prior trading cycle occurred right at day 29. And that is the exact midpoint of the 58 trading day count from uh, from the uh, December low into the March low. Uh, I also did the same thing with the NASDAQ. I did the same thing with the New York Composite. And, uh, and I did the same thing with the Dow Jones Transports. And this table summarizes what I found, Larry, for uh, what I call the big five indices. So we had one right translation, one center translation, and three left translation. So the average there clearly is tipped towards left translation. That tells me that uh, the trend between now and June is probably southbound. In the very, very short term, we're still in the rising up move of the, uh, of the third trading cycle from October of last year. We've got a little bit more to go. I think it probably runs to the end of next week, maybe, uh, maybe the first day into April, um, right in that time frame. And then we start methodically stepping our way down. Uh, what, uh, what is interesting is what I think would be a, a comparison to 2003, 2002 time period. I mentioned this in the last segment. Um, we, had, uh, we had four distinct trading cycles between October of 2002 and March of 2003. Very similar to what's going on right now. Uh, we had a low back then on October the 10th, 2002, which happened to be exactly almost to the day 20 years prior to the October low of last year. And then we made another low on March the 12th of 2003. Uh, that was that same 34 week cycle, but it contracted to about 21 weeks, Fibonacci again. Uh, and that cycle had four distinct trading cycles within the pattern. And then from that March low, it went higher. I think we're going to get something very similar, Larry. Uh, sure. I think we're going to make a um, another low in mid-June. Um, and that's probably, you're going to probably see a tremendous rally out of that hole. I think it's going to catch a lot, catch a lot of people off guard. Almost the entire technical community that I talk with and watch on television uh, and here in the financial media are almost uniformly bearish. And I think that day will come. I don't think we're there yet. Um, so between now and June, I think there's uh, some what I call floor mopping to, uh, to do. And then from the mid-June low, I'm looking for a tremendous rally. 
Um, and uh, maybe not back to new highs. Although some stocks, some ETS may go to a new high. I think the majority of the averages have probably made their all time high. But I don't believe this market is really ready to head, head south uh, in earnest. There's some longer term cycles that occurred in March and are also occurring in June. That's basically providing a floor of support cyclically. And so that's why the market is not yet ready to roll over and head south with a vengeance. Uh, that time will come, but uh, that's probably a year or more away. So right now, let's just enjoy the ride. That's for sure. Now, you also had some charts that you wanted to show us on gold that uh, looked interesting. I do, yes. Um, let's take a look at the gold chart. Uh, going back all the way to the beginning of trading on the, uh, the COMEX in New York, uh, gold has had a tendency to make cyclical lows uh, every 94 months, plus or minus. 94, uh, for those who understand the numerology, that's the Lucas number 47 times 2. And I've, you know, I'm on the air here with you. Um, I've talked a lot about the importance of Lucas numbers. A lot of folks are very familiar with Fibonacci. Very few, I find, are familiar with Lucas. Uh, that's I've kind of been the standard bearer on this. Uh, but I find in the financial markets, uh, while yes, Fibonacci numbers are important, Lucas numbers and their multiples are by far and away far, far more important than the Fibonacci numbers. When I remember a few months ago, you asked me uh, how to rapidly compute the Fibonacci, I mean the uh, Lucas numbers. Well, our good old friend square root of five. If you take the Fibonacci numbers, multiply by the square root of five, you get the Lucas series. Uh, but uh, back to the gold chart. Um, major lows in March of 76, Feb of 85, March of 93, April 01. The last one, of course, was December of 2015. Um, I've dumped all these dates into a spreadsheet, done a regression analysis, uh, pops out a, uh, a, a cycle spanning 94 months, um, which is, of course, as I said, Lucas 47 times 2, plus or minus 8. And uh, a low point in that series is due once again later next year. Wow. When well, we they're really moving the, the market now. We got the Nasdaq up 200, the S and P up 36, the Dow up several hundred. Boy, they're rocking and rolling today. Rocking so, and rolling, indeed. So you, you, and we're up about 40 bucks in gold. So you think there's a possibility that high we made there at 2020 earlier in the week is the high for a while? I think it's distinctly possible, yet to be proven, of course. Mm -hmm. um, this is a, a weekly chart I'm showing on the screen. Uh, the ratios on the weekly chart are clear, uh, mm -hmm. 0 0.146, 0 0.236, 0 0.382, and 0 0.618. Of course, there can be some variance there. I, of course, put it on the, uh, on the uh, reversal bar. Could it come next week or a week later? Well, of course it can. Um, mm -hmm. um, there's, uh, I don't have the calculations in front of me, but the variance, I, I believe, is somewhere on the order of three weeks, two to three weeks. So we may or may not be there, but I would say this, the analysis would suggest we're awfully, awfully close. And if the pattern continues, if it continues, it would suggest um, the next change in trend point based on the Fibonacci analysis in, in late 2024, which, oh, by the way, dovetails neatly with the 94 month cycle that I showed on the prior chart. And that would be uh, a tremendous buy in point for the, uh, the metals complex. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's really good. Listen, Stan, I want to thank you for joining us today. You know, you put a double uh, double feature in for us, but this uh, left translation, right translation, to me, is the key to the cycles. And uh, I learned a lot over the years from Walt Bressert, who was the first person to tell me about it. So thank you for joining us. We'll have you on in a few weeks and stay safe over there. And remember, a few more months, we're going to have summer. We've got spring starting now. So you're going to see the snow melting finally, my friend. <laughs> the snow melting. Yes, you don't have any snow in Tucson. <laughs> yeah, we did this year. We had about four inches. Yeah, but oh. it's all gone now. It's all melted. And everything's everything's back to fine. So, hey, thanks for joining us, my friend. And uh, we really do appreciate your work, buddy. I really enjoy. Stay safe over there, okay? Thank you, Larry. You bet. Stan Harley, folks, with the Harley Stock Market Letter.
If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Catch Tom O'Brien, professional trader and educator, founder of TFNN, also a special guest on CNBC. Tom will bisect and dissect the markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN. Well, I'm going to end the show here on a good note. You'll notice here the gold is up about $40 from the 382 that we hit yesterday. If you did that trade, Make sure you lock in at least 10 cents, whatever you want to do. Looks like you destroyed our number at 4065 in the uh, S&P, folks. After dropping uh, 30 handles, it went right back and made new highs. So it looks like that horse is out of the vault and you're going to be looking at 45 to 47,000 in the E-mini S&P sometime between now and Friday. And today is only Wednesday. So we're going to see what happens. The Fed's out there speaking, and the emotionalism behind this gets pretty heavy. Uh, even the Russell got up on the day, folks. It even took out the high the previous day, I believe. But uh, the others are still uh, moving up. So anyway, uh, the gold worked out really good. Of course, the Japanese yen trade that we've been very bearish on has worked out really well, and our bonds are doing extremely well. They're up uh, well over uh, two points right now from the 382 that we bought yesterday. So... Those sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. But remember, folks, the first mistake teaches, the second mistake kills. Now, tomorrow, uh, we're going to have as our guest none other than the wolf trader himself, Shane Smolian. And then on Friday, we're going to have Jim Bartoloni, who's going to be talking to us about natural gas. And also, he's going to be talking to us about that big, big sell guard that they got in the bank stocks, if you remember, three weeks ago when it was making a perfect 382 retracement on the weekly. So those are things that you want to sort of keep in mind uh, that we're looking at here, and uh, we'll go from there. 
So I hope that helps. So uh, it's raining here in the Pueblo today. So live every day in an attitude of gratitude and may God bless. And we'll see you on the flip side tomorrow. Uh, as I mentioned, we will have uh, Shane Smullyan, and then on Friday will be Jim Bartoleone. Be sure you do something nice for some of your, your relatives, friends, because that, uh, it, it's important. We'll be right back. <laughs>